um, greetings from Indianapolis, Indiana. And um, I am just I'm honored to be here. And I, it's just kind of strange to not see everybody here. But um, the hope is that uh, maybe someday we'll run into each other and I'll actually get to see your lovely faces in person. Um, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana right now. It's about 72 degrees and bright and sunny. And um, I'm sitting up in my office. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and if it's okay with you, I guess we'll go ahead and get started and trying to figure out how I'm gonna share my screen. I probably should have asked that earlier because my, my <laughs> so am I a co-host? <laughs> Can you help me with that? Uh, welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you're all here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen officially now that I know how to do it. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I just want to kind of let you know uh, a little bit about myself. So you'll know um, I am a core professor for STEM education for American College of Education. Um, but there's a little bit more about me that probably will help you to understand me a little better and where I come from. Um, this is a picture of my virtual classroom that I used this year in class with my own students. You'll see I have PLP, PLTW. It's, I am an engineering teacher, but I've also been a third grade teacher. I've also been a fifth grade teacher. I've also been a sixth grade teacher, a seventh grade teacher, an eighth grade teacher, a freshman teacher, and I also have taught um, uh, adults as well. So here's kind of what I was thinking we would do today. Um, again, it's I'm going to keep an eye on the time because I want to be respectful of your time, as well as make sure that there's time for you guys to ask your questions. So um, just a couple of things are going to work. Hopefully everything will work today. Um, fingers crossed as technology always goes, but we're just going to do a few things and get to know one another and then we're going to get right into the meat of things. So um, the first thing I just want to talk to you about is I always think it's fun when you're in this weird virtual environment to know a little bit and see a little bit more. So the first thing that I'm most proud of is that I'm a mom and I'm a wife and I have adult kids. So here are my, it's not the best picture of me, but um, that's my daughter and my son's at the very far end. My husband's next to him and that's my son-in-law in the orange shirt. And then I have two fur babies. Um, one is Minnie and that's our little beagle door on the top. And Crouton is um, his own little character and he is trying to stop me from working. So he just decides he's going to sit on things when he's done and wants me to play, pay attention to him. That's the first thing. Obviously, this is what I actually physically look like in person. Um, my Bitmoji doesn't look quite like it. <laughs> and then um, this is, I share this with you because I teach in Indianapolis, Indiana, but um, I teach in an urban public school uh, middle school, seventh and eighth grade, and my students literally come from all over the world. Um, I have students that are from um, India, they are from the Middle East, they are from Central America, they're from the Caribbean, they're from South America. Um, we have just all sorts of different, uh, our high school has every single spoken language that's recognized in the United States. Um, that's spoken in it, and um, I just, I feel very lucky to be in the environment that I'm in. I love the kids that I'm at and I just feel, um, I just feel like I have the best job in the whole entire world. Um, so, and the last thing is, is I'm a robotics coach. So you can kind of see, this is a little weird. Um, our, uh, oh, I'm so sorry, we went backwards. Hold on one second, there we go. Let me go back a little bit. Um, anyways, you can see my, um, I won't go back. <laughs> um, you can see my students real quickly and my robotics team. What's really funny is, we made it to Worlds, which was in uh, Dallas, but they ended up making it virtual. So we had to get dressed up and show spirit and they actually won their first award on the national, on the worldwide stage. And um, they are so proud of them. So my robotics team has speaks five languages. Um, and I think we have a representation from about uh, 10 on the whole team, about 10 different countries, which is pretty cool. Um, so I want to start out just and tell you um, at the beginning of this, when I look in this, if I would have known what I knew several years ago, <laughs> uh, not years ago now, I guess it's a two years ago, whatever, in March of 19, 2019, um, I, and I could have given myself some good advice. This is probably what I would have given myself. All things online and in the classroom, they should be about the same. And that means that you actually do them, um, you need to take them one step at a time. 
you need to be comfortable with what you're doing. Don't try a whole lot of things at once. I'm going to show you a lot of different things today. Um, and in those things that I'm going to show you, I really want to make sure that you don't grab them all and want to use them all or um, that you take your time with them and you see how what they're going to be like that you talk to your students and you make sure that you need to have time in there that you explain things with your students, no matter what level they are, whether they're adults, whether they are, um, whether they are kindergartners, whatever the case may be, you need to give them time so that they can ask you questions and understand better. Um, I teach master's degree teachers for STEM education. They're getting their master's degree in that. And I will tell you honestly, I'm not being mean or rude or anything else to about my students, but there's a lot of times they don't understand what's going on. And I have to take a step back and put out an announcement and explain a few things or do a one-on-one -on -one or have a conversation with them, a phone call to make them understand what's really going on. So what sometimes appears very natural to us can be very confusing to our students. So talk to your students, ask them what they need to be successful I had a very saucy young man this year um, and I loved him dearly. He and I got along very well, but he was very saucy at times. And one day he was on the Zoom call and he said to me, you're just making us do too much. And I said, really? And I said, why do you think that? And so all of a sudden he went dark and started putting things in the chat. And what I realized was, is I needed to move a little slower with him and everyone and I needed to be really specific about how I posted the assignments. I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't taken a few minutes to just talk to them. So talk to your students. Um, use your coworkers, resources, collaborators. Um, I, am, I am happy to answer any of your phone calls or emails, whatever you would like to do. I'm happy to be here for you. Um, I'm not planning on running away anytime soon. So, and don't beat yourself up. I don't know about where all of you are at. We're gonna find that out in just a second, but I will tell you honestly, I had a lot of times where I'm like, oh, I was on mute for like 10 minutes. Don't beat yourself up. We're all making mistakes and you all need to give yourself grace. And the biggest thing is, is I don't know how familiar you are with this term, but um, this is something that we say around where I'm from, which is kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And sometimes we all just have to say that to ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and not share my screen for a second because I wanna go back just for a step and go back to this one, here it is. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is I wanna make this um, interactive for you. I'm gonna click on this screen. I need to move this away because it got really small here. I'm gonna move this over here. Hold on one second, let me get you out of the way. There we go. And then I'm going to ask you to click here Oh, on my screen. I guess you can't click, can you? <laughs> I just realized you can't click, so you can't tell me who you are. So I am so sorry about that. That's one thing that won't work. But what I was going to do, and I will tell you, because it's one area of assessment that you could do, is a Jamboard. And I often ask my kids simple things. I say, hey, you know, like, what do you know about Robot C? What do you know about loops? What do you know about when I used to teach earth science, I used to in and life science and physics, I used to say, what do you know about volcanoes? What do you know? And a jam board is a great thing. It is very simple. You just share the link. And when you share the link, it goes directly to it and the kids can post and they have these little post it notes and they think they're really cool. So what I am going to ask, though, is yeah, Debbie, sorry to interrupt. Can you copy and paste that link into the chat and we can click I on it? Yeah, do that. That's a great idea. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> see, all of us have great minds when we all work together. <laughs> Let's see. Where'd my chat go? <laughs> Here's the, oh, there it is. It just popped up. Here we go to everyone. And here we go. Here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and now you guys can go ahead and do that, which is awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, time you just a little bit. I have a three minute timer right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I don't know if you know you're familiar with online stopwatch, but with kids, depending, especially from middle school on down, and I've heard high schoolers love this too. They have all different ones and it's completely free, but we're going to do a little bomb. So we're just going to let it click down. And if you could do me a favor to go ahead and start posting and then let me know where you're from. And I will tell you this really quickly. You'll see this map that's in the bottom left hand corner. 
Um, that map actually is in my office. That's my desk I'm sitting at right now. And I have pins in there for all of my students that I have from wherever they're at. So I would love to know where you're from. So if you could also put that in just a little bit. So I would love it. You can go ahead and if you've never done this before, um, you click on the little, I'll, I'll use my little, there's a cursor right here. You click on the little thing, it's a little post-it note and you can make a little sticky note. So, and when you make a sticky note, then you, there you go. Awesome. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> that is so fun. I love it. And we're all learning today. The other thing is you can do a screenshot of the, um, of the Jamboard and keep it for yourself. And I've printed these out for my school, my students at school. So everyone, if you can go ahead and put on your, pick out your, put your stickies out, that would be awesome for me so I can see. And my poor little, we could even move my map off. It doesn't bother me a bit. Now you all saw it. So you now know. <laughs> Awesome. This is great. I love this. <laughs> I've had my kids introduce themselves with this. Um, I've had my kids answer an exit ticket with this. Um, I've used it for a lot of different things and it's a really easy thing to do. And I should have known to put it in the chat. I apologize. <laughs> so your name, where you're from, and what you teach. Debbie, is this free to use if you just go on Google Jamboard? It is absolutely free if you just awesome. do a um, real quick uh, Google search and just type Jamboard in. It'll come in. You can log in with your Google account, and then you're off to the races. So, and you can make as many as you want to. You can have some, uh, some things I'll share with you today. You have a resource of like, you can do three or four. This one, you can have as many as you want, which is really nice. This is awesome. This is awesome. San Jose, Costa Rica, that's awesome. That is awesome. This is wonderful. Let me see where my watch Oh my goodness! <laughs> so the sound you just heard was my um, was my alarm going off. So I wanted to just share so you could hear that going off. That's one of the ones you can continue to post as long as you want. We can come back to that towards the end. I have it, but I want to keep going just a little bit so we under we stay on time. So the next thing I want to talk about is we obviously our big topic is about assessment. So just to set the stage and get it out there so you know what it is, what is assessment? And I think it's really interesting to note that it's a wide variety of methods. It's not one thing or the other. It is that they're used to evaluate, to measure, document the academic readiness, learning progress, skill acquisition, or educational needs of our students. And I think that's really important to realize it's not a one and done. It can be formative, it can also be summative. And I think really good teachers actually know how to make them formative. And, and you should actually have a lot more formative than you have summative, in my opinion. And that's that you're guiding your instruction based on what you're getting online. And what I just showed you with Jamboard was one way you could do that. Um, so there's different kinds of assessments. Um, they are, um, I'm gonna ask you, a, this is a different group and I will probably have to put the link in the chat again, um, but this is Stormboard and Stormboard is also free. It's a little different. Um, we may not spend as much time on Stormboard. It's a little bit more difficult for those of you that maybe teach middle school to college. This might be a really good thing for you to use. It's a little bit more difficult for um, elementary students and it has a lot of templates. So there's actually like um, Venn diagrams, there's all sorts of different things you can put on the board. So I'm, I'll go ahead and link to it and then I will put the link in the chat so that you can go ahead and, and kind of have a, at least have it up on your screen so you can see it. So let me go and do this and then I'm gonna put it in the chat. 
so you can see it as well. So this is also free to educators. Um, I think you can. I think you can have an account for free, but I think there might be some. Um, there might be some limits if you're not an educator. Um, but this is basically the same kind of things as Jamboard, except that it's got more capabilities. There's a lot more templates to it. Um, you can actually do a report off of it, which is good to keep. Um, so there's obviously other things. So we know the different kinds of assessments are there. I won't pretest. You can do another, um, another sticky note and see where it says add down here. You would click add and then you write in what you think um, as an assessment. So can you think of a couple assessments? Can we put a couple up there just that you have used in your classroom or that you know about or heard about? So Debbie, it looks like we need to sign up and make an account, but you said it's free. It is free, yeah. So that's okay. So we'll go on and that's fine. So okay. can so things that are, um, and that's perfectly fine, um, things you learn when you're doing a live presentation, right? <laughs> um, but the thing about it is, is if you put the link here, it will actually go to your class. So by sharing the link, it just didn't work in chat and that's fine. So the storm board, um, some things that you might have put on there, exit card, um, there's a parking lot, there could be windshield checks, which are really hard to do online, um, but you could do fingers checks. You could have, I've had my kids all turn their screens on and say, on a scale of one to five, how well do you understand this? And then I'll have, you know, like five being you completely understand, one you're completely lost, three you're in the middle, and those kind of things, there's all different kinds of assessments that we have used as, as good educators. So the next thing I wanna talk about is there are assessment loops that we use. Now, John Wooden, uh, he is famous in, in, in Indiana because he's from Indiana, but he also was the most winning coach for the NCAA basketball, if you're a basketball fan. Um, but he actually was an educator to begin with. He actually uh, was the coach for Luel Cinder, which is actually Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, if you've ever heard of him, um, and uh, Bill Walton, who is, he's a commentator now, but he was an amazing man. And I got to meet him at a conference one time, and I will never forget, he had the ability to look at you and ask you your name, and he'd repeat it, and then he would not forget it. And I met him that night, and I'll, I came back to him probably 10 minutes later, and he said, how are you doing? Are you enjoying this, Debbie? And I was like, he remembers me because there were literally probably two or 300 people in the room. And I think that's really important that we, number one, recognize our students and we're real to them, that we are really engaging with them and we have a relationship and we're gonna talk about a, lot, a little later too. But what he said, what John Wooden said is he said, basically, we don't need to ask what we've, taught students. We have to ask what they've learned. And I think that is so important in assessment because it is one of those things where we can't get on a stage any longer. We can't post things in Canvas any longer and just assume it's magically going to happen because kids are all along the road and that some may have stopped for a hamburger. Some may be just getting gas, some may be tooling along, some may be speeding and watching out for the police. There are a whole lot of different situations that our kids are in on that road. And we need to make sure that we're getting them all to the destination we need to get them at. So there's three, there's three different loops that are assessment loops. There's implicit assessment, there's lagging assessment, and then there's real-time assessment. And I wanna spend just a second to talk a little bit about that so for implicit assessment, this is one that we don't really use a whole lot. And I really think on an online environment, it's very important. Implicit assessment is an assessment that you are going to give with an exemplar. It can look a lot of different ways. It can be a paragraph. So you can have students write a paragraph about what they know about a certain animal, or you could have them um, write a paragraph and to introduce themselves. But you would then show them an exemplar of maybe you introducing yourself or explaining what it would look, what a paragraph would look to explain about an animal. And so the whole goal that it's not even something you really grade. You may ask them to turn it in just to make sure they've done it, but the whole goal is that they're learning. And so you would say things like, if you addressed the color of the animal, put a check by that. 
if you um if you included a beginning to your paragraph let's say you introduced your paragraph put a check by that if you put a really good summative sentence at the end of your paragraph put a check by that and the whole purpose is that kids are learning from the very best of how to make theirs their information and their products better so that's implicit assessment it's done with a specific purpose and it's done not to get a grade necessarily, but to teach in the evaluation part of itself. Lagging assessment is what we as teachers are so good at. I hand you a worksheet, you fill it out, you turn it in. So we can even have that in an online environment. We put something out on Canvas, they fill it out, they turn it in. Here at ACE, we have a very similar thing. They, have an, they may have an analysis or they may have a presentation or a paper to write. They turn it in and then I have to read all of those and I put my feedback on there and I grade it and I send it back to them. It's not real time. So that's something that is really important to understand. Real time assessment is something different. Real time assessment is right away. You are literally watching what they're doing and you're making comments. Now in the classroom, you would be walking around checking their papers. But in an online environment, that might look different. So you might be asking them to do a small um, assessment, maybe a quiz on an on the LMS system that you use. Um, and it's maybe two or three questions. It could be they do a whiteboard and hold it up in front of you. And we do have, you'll notice I have a link to a Wi-Fi uh, whiteboard that's called Whiteboard white, Whiteboard Fi. And it is also another free um, free product you can use. And so you can actually put one of those up, have them post to it. It is it is real-time assessment that you're gonna get immediately. And you wanna know, are you with me? Are you there? So if I were gonna say a test that somebody was gonna fill out, they would turn it into me. That would be lagging. If I was gonna go through, ask them to do something like maybe start their essay, and I wanna talk about their introductory paragraph, and I'm gonna show them, I'm gonna say, okay, today we're just writing your introductory paragraph and we're gonna go over what needs to have in it. That's not gonna be what I'm gonna assess them on. I'm gonna, that is gonna be an implicit assessment. That's gonna be making sure you've got everything you need and you may have to turn it in, but it's basically gonna be a, um, uh, what, a completion grade for lack of a better term, okay? Real-time assessment is when you do the one-to-one. -one. Okay, so let me show you on this Wi-Fi board. If I click to the Wi-Fi board, and I actually should have copied that and put it in your in, in the chat again, which I apologize. Ah, hold on, hold on, here we go. Let me go back. Escape, I'm so sorry. Here we go, let me do this, here we go. Here's the link and I will put it in the chat and then you can take a peek at this. And again, um, it is free for teachers. Um, you may, um, if you find that you can't do this in the, in the presentation part of it, which is fine, um, we can, so I don't know why this is not working. I have this all working. Is it going there for you guys? Are you getting there? Carrie, do you see it there? Yes, you just have to put your name and then click join classroom and yes. Okay, we're... perfect. Okay, it is working. It's just not, I'm just flipping with, with, mine's not taking me where it needs to be. So that's okay, that's okay, as long as it's working for you guys. So, um, so that's a really good example. It's a tool you can use. Um, some people really like it. Um, it actually goes along with, it's the same makers of Kahoot. So if you're familiar with Kahoot, the quiz, um, they do a really good job with that. Um, so that's an idea for you as well. So I'm going to move on. And that is this. Um, so what is one thing that makes all the difference in assessment? So um, there's a movie called City Slickers. If you've never seen it, you might want to put it on your list. It's hysterical. It's with Billy Crystal. It's just hysterical. But there's this old cowboy in it and he holds his finger up he says it's all about the one thing and billy crystal says what's the one thing and he goes 
it's the one thing that's so important that you don't even have to, you don't care about anything else. And Billy Crystal's like, oh, okay. Well, in assessment, that one thing is feedback. And that is the most important thing that you're going to be able to do in any situation at any level that you're at. Um, in my situation at ACE, one of the things that they evaluate me at the end of every one of my less at, at, and at the end of every one of my sessions. And one of the things that always gets mentioned is that they appreciate the feedback that I give them. And I don't do anything magical. I just follow the principles I'm going to show you in, in this next slide. Um, feedback should consist of being corrective. Um, they do, some teachers have called about the sandwich. You say a compliment and then something to work on and then you sandwich it with a compliment. That's one thing that they've used, but they should answer that middle part should answer one of these three questions. Where am I going? So I see that you've done this. I need you to take it here. Um, I see that you have addressed, and especially with um, our English language learners when they're when they are sitting there writing um, papers and addressing in paragraphs and they're trying to answer lab reports and they're trying to explain, it's really important for them to know, I see that you've explained this, but this is where you need to go next. This is what you need to address. So how am I gonna get there is the next thing. It could be that you need to look, the, uh, that feedback looks like you may have to go back and analyze your data that you took and create a chart. You may want to go back and look at what you wrote for, you know, questions number one through five to get information to put into your conclusion. How are you going to get there? You're actually giving them the, what do you want, the step that they need for like, if you're going to, uh, my husband has a truck and he, it's very tall and I have to have a step. <laughs> to get inside the truck. And that's what this feedback is. It's that step. What do I need to get to that next place? How are you going to get there? So where am I going to go? I need to address this. But how am I going to get there is where you need to go to get the information. And the last one is, where will you go next? And that is, okay, I've seen you addressed all of these different things about this character, or you've written all of this about the story. But what's going to happen after, you know, uh, Little Red Riding Hood gets to the cottage <laughs> and finds that her grandma is a wolf? Um, and what are you going to do after that? You know, are you going to have, and you could put that in any situation, but students get so wrapped up in what they need to do that sometimes they can't see. We have a phrase here that says they can't see the forest or the trees. And meaning what that means is they can't see the rest of what they need because they're so concerned with what's right in front of them. So the feedback gives them that direction on the highway of where they need to pick it up, what they need to do to, you know, get to that next space where they need to be to get that better grade. Um, you know, when I think about my students I've graded before, some of them struggle to write incomplete sentences. And I have to say things like to them, like, I see that you've really done a great job of putting the content down, but I need you to really put it in a coherent sentence so I understand exactly what you're saying. So I can give you a bunch of data, but if I don't understand where the data, what the data is, then I'm, then it's just data, it's just information. So um, that's what those three questions, if you're gonna write anything down about today, this is a really good thing for you to keep in mind. Um, the next thing is, and that is, this is so important. I can't overstress this, that your relationships really need to count. Whether you're in the face-to-face -face situation or whether you're in an online situation, take the time that you need to talk to your students. I always do a Zoom call with all of my classes. And it is amazing to me how many times that comes out in feedback that that was so awesome to be able to do a face-to-face. -face. But if you can't do a face-to-face, -face, if you're all 100% you know, virtual, 
take the moment and just ask them, you know, how was your weekend? Sometimes I heard, well, I heard someone once say, take the first five minutes of every Monday class and just ask questions. Just say, you know, how many of you were able to do this weekend? And how many of you were able to do this this weekend? Did any of you do this this weekend? How did you celebrate um, Christmas? How did you celebrate New Year's? You know, just those questions make you real. And in an online learning environment, they have to feel like they're going to connect with you. You can't get anything out of them if you don't connect. And I will tell you that some of the teachers that in my my seventh and eighth grade job would say, well, the kids never talk to me. They never say anything to them. And I would say things like, well, have you ever just had a moment where you talk? Well, I'm too busy. I've got too much content. No content is worth you not having a relationship with your kids. There's a balance, but no content's ever going to get past the front of their face if you don't, if they don't trust you, if they don't have a night, if they don't have a relationship with you. Okay. Um, you need to be seen as credible in the eyes of your students. Now in ACE, for upper, for higher education, we post, we write, we show them things that we've used. Um, they need to know in, in, in the situation with all of you, sometimes I post things that I use with my students in my class. They need to see that you're really there. So if you're using for little babies, you know, it could be credible that you know more than they do. I used to always, when I was teaching earth, um, I say earth science because it's my favorite thing to teach, but when I used to teach um, seventh grade science and eighth grade science, I would always go and break out that college textbook and I subscribed to Science Magazine and NSTA and I would read anything I could that broadened my scope of what the understanding was where they were supposed to be. So. Um, a principal a long time ago that I had told me, you're a brilliant teacher, but I, I need to know that you're, the kids know that you know more than they do. And that really hit home to me. And it's a really good piece of information to put in your head. The last thing is your climate of your online classroom needs to have a growth mindset. So what I have found is I've told kids, and I there's a lot of different thoughts out there, but I've told kids you can redo anything that you turn in as long as you ask me. And the reason I do that is because, especially in engineering, sometimes kids really mess up. They just really mess up. Is it better for me to nail them on a grade or for them to learn from their mistakes and get better? And I would say it's the latter, not the former. And the reason I say that is because my experience has been some of my kids that struggle the most in the beginning of class become some of my best students at the end of the semester and the end of the year. And the reason is, is because they don't quit. They keep putting, you know, just trying to put themselves out there to get that one more thing right, to understand what they got wrong. And when you have that kind of environment in your classroom, in your online classroom, you're going to get more from your students and you're going to actually teach them a life skill they're going to be able to use in more than just your class. Um, next, the next thing is, here's the main point. <laughs> it's the main point is, how do you know they haven't? Just like John Wooden said, you got to know that they've learned. So simpler is always better. Break things down in pieces. Um, when I was teaching in person, I would do my engineering and I would put it all on one big long page. What I found out for my middle school students is they needed it in smaller chunks. So I used modules and I would break down inside the module, do this first, second, third. And at ACE, we're going through a training right now and magically that's exactly what they're doing for the adults. So break it down, make it super simple. My student that I had that was a little saucy, he even said, Ms. Huffine, at the bottom of it, would you just put, turn this in? And I thought, well, that's a super simple thing. And yeah, so I started putting to be turned in. I that made it a little fancier. And literally, I had so much more work turned in because they knew at the end of the paper, at the end of the day, whatever the period was, they knew what they needed to turn in. And it was stated right at the very bottom. And so parents really liked that too, because they just scroll down to the bottom and they'd see it right there. They didn't have to have, they didn't have to read through the whole thing. They didn't have to see and assess. I also put a to-do date on the calendar, but that depends on your LMS system. 
um, one-on-one -on -one conversations. A lot of times I would put kids in breakout rooms and I would tell the kids, okay, you're going to work on this. I'm going to pull, I'm going to do individual conferences. And so I would pull the kids in little breakout rooms and I'd have a, just a one-on-one -on -one with them. And by the end of the week, I would get through my entire class. I would just do, you know, two or three kids, five kids a day, depending on how big the class was. And I would just have a one-on-one -on -one with them. What can I do to help you? How are you confused? What do you need me to help you with? What, you know, and it was amazing the information I got out of that. Um, exit tickets, you can use a jam board, the white by whiteboard I shared with you. You could use um, the storm board I shared with you. All of those things, great ways for online, um, online exit tickets. You could also do a quiz, which I've done a lot of quizzes, just you know, one and two question quizzes for for um, for the exit tickets. And if you make a multiple choice, then they're a little easier to grade. And you also, the nice part about the multiple choice, if you make a really great multiple choice question, is you can pull the analytics off your LMS, and so you can know exactly how many kids don't understand something. Um, have students do a short video summarizing what they've learned. I'm a big Flipgrid fan. I'm amazed at how many times kids get camera shy. So Flipgrid allows them to put stickers on their face and all sorts of things. It's another free service. Um, you can embed it into most LMS systems. If you have a single sign-on system, um, I have a single sign-on in my at my school called Clever, and I just put it on my page. The kids access it straight off the page, and they'll tell me two things, three things they've learned. Um, it's pretty amazing. It's a really good, and then they then you can post them all, and they can learn from one another. They can watch each other's, which is if you've never used it, it's pretty fun. Um, post frequent questions. I have a lot of times kids will ask a question and I will turn it around and have that be their bell work the, their bell ringer when they walk in the door that question that somebody has in the afternoon probably is going to be this uh, the same question somebody else has ha else has and they just didn't say anything so I'll use those questions to help me do a little bit of planning for the next day and then do a poll in the middle of the lesson so if you have Nearpod you can do an easy poll you can also do, um, I'm going to show you a polling um, product as well that you can do. Now you can only have like three or four polls at a time, but sometimes that's enough. In Zoom, you can also do a poll. I'm not a big fan of the Zoom polls um, because they're a little awkward to use. But if it's your own class, then it's a little easier to do the Zoom polls. Um, but you can do them in the middle of the lesson, see if kids are paying attention. Um, don't kill yourself. The kids need you. Um, and, and just understand, they know that you're there for them, but they need to know that you care about them. And I think that is a really important piece. Okay, so I have something engaging and I'm gonna, you know, when I talked about doing this, they said we have all different spectrums of people. Um, I had a little thing I would do in my class. We played baseball every day. I told the kids, you get three strikes and I call your parents. Not you, I call your parents. And believe it or not, I only had to call parents twice in one in second semester. And so if I call on you and you don't say anything, hmm, okay. Then if I call on you twice, the third time I call on you, I'm just gonna pick up the phone and see, because I'm worried about you. Are you okay? Are you there? Are you safe? Um, and that worked really well. But another way I did it is I would use this online stopwatch. An online stopwatch is great. They, if you go to the website, which I have it linked right here, but just Google online stopwatch, they actually have random name pickers on there. They have online stopwatch. They have all sorts of, they have little races with robots. It's very, very cute. There's all sorts of things if you haven't used it, definitely like get familiar with it. It is hysterical to use. Um, and my kids love it. Um, and they and it makes them pay attention. So if the name generator calls your name and Rami doesn't respond, then that's then that's one. I'll give you another chance. You know, it could be that you just you know you lost your concentration, but you shouldn't lose it three times in one 50 minute period. So anyways, those are just some ideas that might be helpful. And then I wanted to share this with you because I'm going to pop out of my out of here because I have to get to my controls. But one of the things my kids love, are Google Chrome extensions. And I don't know, I have some real fun ones on mine. Like I have balloons and they start going up. So when I ask a question, this one's a little slow. So I will have the balloons go up or this one is um, confetti that just drops from the ceiling. 
And then I also have these confetti cannons and I don't know why it's a poop emoji, but my kids love these celebrations and it, it breaks up the time. And so if I ask a random question and somebody answers, we do, a, I, I will go ahead and do a, um, a celebration for them. If you haven't seen the Wheel of Names, it's another great uh, random generator and it actually take the name out of the hat for them. It's super, super great. Um, you might want to check into that. So these are some tools that I've used this year, believe it or not. Um, some of them I like better than others. Some of them I use for different reasons. Um, GeoGebra is a great one. Uh, Desmos is another one that I don't think it's on here. It's really basically more for middle school, high school kids. Um, but Pear Deck is a lot with littler kids if you've got that. Edpuzzle you can use from all the way up to high school. I've seen it done. Brain Pops a great is just a, a real quick, they've got the little videos, they've got the, you know, they've got some, um, they've got some quizzes on there. And if there are a lot of free ones out there, your district can buy one, but buy a subscription, but there are a lot of free ones out there. Um, quiz is one of my favorites. And I will be honest with you, I used to be a big Kahoot fan, love quiz a lot more. And the reason is, is because they can do it at their own speed and it still sends you analytics and it does little celebrations for them as they're doing it independently. So if you haven't checked that one out, definitely check that one out. And it's got a lot more um, capabilities for different kinds of questions. Um, the Google Suite, awesome. Flipgrid I talked about earlier. Tinkercad is a free coding that I use in my classes. Padlet, if you've never seen Padlet, you can get three to four free Padlets. And it's, it's like, um, it's another situation where you can ask a question and kids can post on it. So it's another great one you can use for assessment or you can use for, um, I actually did it for um, projects and the kids had to fill all the different things. So you might wanna check that out as well. Vocabulary is, is a great, uh, they have really um, hip hop videos that the kids like to watch and they put different concepts from everything from language to science and social studies on to engineering on in, into a tune. Um, they like it. GeoGebra FET is out of Carolina, um, University of Colorado and they're all free and they're all science. So if you need any science ones. So I'll let you look through the rest of these. I don't need to go through all of them. One of the ones that one of my students started me on is Generation Genius. If you're not familiar with that, they have a reading, they have a quiz, they have a pre-assessment, they have a video. It's all in a nice, neat, tidy package. So you might wanna look at that as well. Um, another one of my students uses OneNote at the high school. And I've, it's come a long way from when I first started using OneNote. So you might wanna check that out if you teach secondary. Um, and then I wanted to share this with you. These are, and then I'm gonna, I think I'll have a few minutes for um, some questions. Um, so these are some reasons I've used um, the breakout rooms. I've used expert rooms. Now you can see my kids have headsets on and these are my kids again. <laughs> um, and when they code, some kids get it really, really fast and some kids just struggle. Um, and so what I did is I had four experts in the room and I let the kids pick the expert they wanted to go to. It turned out that they were all busy and and if they didn't get what they needed from one expert, they could go to another room. And so they would come in, share their screen. They would go over and say, what am I doing wrong? Can you help me? The kids were great. They did an awesome job. Um, the, I had roomies and zoomies with group projects and I figured out that the kids in the room did the actual physical part. The kids on the other side would actually be responsible for more of the written part of it. And that worked really, really well. I had virtual lab partners and I would actually take my, um, my camera and let them actually show on their camera. Um, sometimes they took pictures and they would get on their phones and share pictures. It was pretty, that was pretty cool. Um, and they would take notes. My Zoomies would take notes while my roomies were actually doing the work. Um, this is one I wanted to share with you. I, it was, I should have known a long time ago, but if you want to do, you can use this for a lot of different things. Um, you could use it for uh, an assessment. You could put a question down. Kids will make a, um, they make a slide and you do a gallery view and you can watch them all fill it in at once. And I 
just didn't know what gallery view was. And when I started using it, it was a game changer. For this situation, they were finding a Rube Goldberg cartoon and then listing five of the mechanisms that were in the cartoon, so, so you know. But that grid view and slides is huge. It's awesome. And then I've also had the kids do um, a dictionary, disease dictionary, and they did it all at once. Like they picked, I gave them a disease and that was their slide. And when I hit gallery view, I could watch them all work at once. And those kiddos that can't handle themselves and really want to go in and change somebody else's, they, I can see them going on there. Plus history will show you as well. So just a couple of things, and I'd be happy to share with you. Um, I think my PowerPoint will be out there somewhere that you can actually use the, all of these are active um, links. So if you have the PowerPoint with you, you can actually um, go ahead and just link to them. They're not PowerPoints, just slides. Um, and I'm happy to send them to you as well. But interactive slides, basically you make a background and then the kids can actually go in and fill it in and they can't change what you have on there. For labeling the brain, I had all sorts of brain images and then the different things, but you could do that for a million different things. You can do them for spelling, you can do them for um, different sounds, you can do them for matching you know, shapes. I mean, um, a picture to a word, you can do all sorts of different things with those. Choice boards, they go to a different part of the slide and they can do, and this one I had them do three out of the six. Disease Dictionary I explained already. Robotics Convention was really fun. There's a website that goes with it that I created. They got to go into the different rooms and they had to fill out 10 booths of these different places that they went. And then I had it, and again, I'm more than happy to share. Um, experimental Design, this is another interactive slide they did. Um, they had to design an experiment and I gave them the bones and then they had to fill it all in. And the digital notebook, if you know anybody who teaches engineering, I struggle with engineering on the digital notebook, but I figured out a way to do this. My, my kids on the other end did almost every single bit of it at home. And my kids that were in the room, they were the ones who were actually doing what my kids at home were telling them to do. It was really cool. So that works. So um, then this is just, I'm going to move this down here real quick. So um, the last thing I just want to talk about real quickly, and then I'll, we'll have about eight minutes or whatever for um, questions, is I want you to think about pretests for a second in a different light. So for the most part, we're taught that pretests are for us to find out where the kids are at. Well, in an online environment, you have the ability to not have to collect the test. The test is out there. And I never have given the same pretest as I gave as a post-test. I think that that's not really showing what kids could know, but rather what kids can memorize. So um, what I would do is I would make the pretest up and then I would I would make the post-test up that was similar, but not the same, you know, situation. It might be the same situation, but different numbers. It might be a slightly different situation, but the same kind of calculation. Um, and I left it open with multiple attempts. And then what happened is when we got to the final test, I said to the kids, okay, you can go back on your pretest and see how much you know now. And I didn't have to do a study guide. It formed, it became a study guide. But I also told the kids that I would take their highest score on their pretest, no questions asked. So because you can do history on their turn-ins, I could actually see some of my kids would take it four and five times as we went through the unit, but every time they would get a little better score. And then I would take it as a, as a last, right at the very end, I would take their score. It was amazing to me that their performance skyrocketed on the final assessments. Because when, they're, when I would have a conversation with their parents, or they got in the habit themselves of going back and looking at the pretest because maybe they were confused. Then when they go through, they're like, oh, wait a minute, I remember that now. To go back and relook at that pretest gives them the chance to say, that's that growth mindset. Oh, I didn't understand it then, but I do understand it now. And then now I understand what's going to be on the final. So I want you to kind of think about that in a little slightly different way than you have before and really question yourself. You could do it for a quiz even, you know, that's going to be like a week or whatever. I, you know, I used hey, Debbie. to. Debbie. Yeah. 
So sorry, um, they just requested if we could open for questions now because they have another session uh, right at 2.30. Absolutely, because guess what? Um, I had a takeaway and it's the end. So yes, Perfect. absolutely, open it up for questions. <laughs> Great, yeah, so if anyone has any questions that they want to put in the chat, and um, we do have one already that says, would you recommend two or three assessment sites for young learners? So the the Wi-Fi site, the the whiteboard site I sent, I gave you, that's a really easy one because it actually is more user friendly for kids. Um, Jamboard I've seen done with kindergartners, and they once they get good with it, they'll do that. The other ones are a little bit more sophisticated, but those are the two I would recommend. Great. And is it okay if I put your email in the chat for anyone who? Yes, absolutely. Like Please do. Out? Okay. Great. All right, so um, we are we are is very very uh, thankful to Debbie and Carrie for this presentation today. Uh, I forgot to tell you before we began that Debbie is a core professor <laughs> at the STEM education at um, American College of Education. And she's graduated from the same university. Uh, she got her education specialist uh, with focus on STEM education. And she's got 30 years of experience teaching in different elementary uh, grades. Uh, and she also served as district instructional coach in her district. And she has been developing uh, robotic programs, right, at her school. So um, she knows what, what she's talking about. <laughs> Thank you so much, Debbie. Oh, you're welcome. And hopefully we'll meet again in the future, virtually or face-to-face. Um,